Okay, so if you're looking for a video to help you hit exponentially more 200 pumps, I have you covered. And also, if you're just trying to hit more shots in general, I got you covered as well. So let's get straight into this video. So to hit more shots with your pump, you need to find the weaknesses in your playstyle. And for most people, it's one of these three things, and that's bad crosshair placement, your sensitivity being too high or too low. And I know low sensitivity is kind of associated with having good aim, but it can also be the cause of bad aim. And I'll explain all of that to you later in the video. But the third thing is the most important thing in this video, and I'll be discussing it towards the end, which is trigger discipline. And not a lot of videos on this topic talk about it. So it's going to be something brand new for you. And I'll explain it to you at the end of the video. Let's get straight into it, boys. So the first two things I mentioned in the intro, which was bad crosser placement and your sensitivity being too high or too low. Those two things kind of intertwine and that's why you have bad crosser placement. It's literally because your sensitivity is too high or too low. And that's probably the most common cause of bad crosser placement. And that's just sensitivity tweaks. So there's two things we can do. Number one, we can adjust your sensitivity to try and get it as a nice mid-level sensitivity. So it's not too low and it's not too high. Or number two, we can try and kind of focus on drills to improve your muscle memory on that sensitivity because that's the only two ways to do it. It's either, you know, avoid the problem by changing your sensitivity or getting great muscle memory by literally doubling down and practicing your aim. So let's get straight into it, okay? The best way to get control of your sensitivity is through these drills right here. And that's 10 minutes of practicing your precision. That's hitting small targets and it's nothing to do with speed. So you'll probably be moving your crosshair very slow. Then 10 minutes of practicing flicks. Flicks is like zapping across your screen, kind of snap aiming. And then you want to be practicing 10 minutes of tracking. Tracking is where you're now using your SMG aim to track. But it's also very helpful for shotgun aim, especially when you're using something like the tack, where with the pump, you kind of just flick, hit them heavy, and swap to your SMG and track them. But with the tack shotgun, when someone's hopping around your box, you have to keep your crosshair on them. It's not really as snappy as the pump. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the specific drills you need in this video. What I will do is throw a code up on screen for the Shavok aim trainer because that's one of the best aim trainer maps and you can easily find literally drills titled flicks or precision or tracking within that, within that map. But I'll also leave a link in the description to my uh, aim lab video. Aim lab is one of the best aim trainers going and I'm not sponsored or anything like that, bro. I'm I'm less than 5k subs, bro. I don't think I'm getting sponsored by anybody in a minute. That's why we're on that grind. So if this video is helping you out. You got to hit that sub button, bro. I drop videos like this all the time. Usually come with a more passive energy, but you know, trying out some new shit coming with that high energy, just kind of shooting facts at you. So if you like this style of video, definitely subscribe because we post videos like this daily. Now that myself promo is out of the way. The aim training routine I just mentioned, which was 10 minutes of practice in precision, 10 minutes of practicing flicks, and then 10 minutes of practice in tracking. That's a 30 minute aim routine. And that's way below average. Trust me when I say, all the top tier CSGO players. Now CSGO and Valorant and stuff like that, they're very aim intense games as well as positioning. But they will spend anywhere, like the pros will spend anywhere up to two hours on aim training. You don't need to do that with Fortnite because with Valorant, there is a little bit of bloom and recoil. But with Fortnite, the aim is really kind of, your aim is affected a lot by bloom and just by look based things that aren't really up to you, such as ping that you can't control input delay as well it can be controlled and minimized but you don't have full control over it the same way you do as improving your aim if you want to improve your aim anybody can do it sometimes it's like better to improve your aim on a mid-level sensitivity because it makes it better for precision and for flicks that's the thing when you play on a really low sensitivity your precision goes through the roof and trust me someone who used to play on a low sensitivity i can hit any shot bro ads hip fire Bro, if you watched my streams, you would know about it. I hit every shot at long range, okay? That's with precision, though. On the other hand, you've got flicks, which is that snappy stuff. When you're on a low sensitivity and it's too low, you can't flick intensely. So when there's someone over your right shoulder, you can't do a 180 and snap to them. But on a higher sensitivity, you can definitely flick. But then your precision goes down. So yeah, you can pull off that flick nice and fast. But is it going to be a 200 pump headshot? Probably not. So that's why you need to find a nice mid ground and tracking. Trust me, tracking is actually way easier on a high sensitivity and um, better on a mid sensitivity. That's something that benefits a lot from on a mid sensitivity because sometimes you have to track from very far away where low sensitivity is really nice. But when somebody's really close to you, high sensitivity definitely wins. So that's why you always want to go for something in the middle. Super beneficial. Um, any sensitivity that I recommend here is based off 800 DPI and mouse and keyboard. 
I'll give controller recommendations as well. But basically, 800 DPI and your X and Y, like your hip fire sensitivity, should be anywhere between five to I would say eight. That's a nice mid level sensitivity. You could probably push it till 10, but that's a bit risky. I play on 10, which is on the higher end. It's a much more harder to hit shots. Better for editing though. So I will just say right now, okay, between five and 10 on 800 DPI. After 10, you're going into that high sensitivity threshold again. So I'll say it again, five to 10 sensitivity on 800 DPI. Then for my controller players out there, bro, if you're playing linear or exponential, definitely rock between um, 40 X and Y to 65 X and Y. 60 is where I used to pop, bro. I used to pop on about 61 sensitivity with linear. And I was savage when I played controller. So trust me when I say that is definitely a solid sensitivity. And that was when I played on PC and on PlayStation. So it doesn't really matter so much about your sensitivity, different consoles, you know, like, you know, 60 frames and stuff. It matters a little bit. But trust me when it comes to shotgun aim, 61 sensitivity, no matter what platform you play on controller, it's pretty solid. So, like I said, that aim routine is in the description. And the reason why I recommend aim labs, okay, nothing, nothing to do with anything, uh, like no sponsors or anything like that. It's solid. What I mean by that is if you go into aim lab, it's only on PC. You can use it for controller or keyboard and mouse though and use those like, I guess that kind of practice routine I was talking about earlier where it's, you know, 10 minutes precision, 10 minutes flicks, 10 minutes track and use that format. It's pretty solid. But... Aim Lab is so good because when you turn all the sense, like all the you know settings or visual settings to low, it's so overpowered because you get basically zero input delay. And I'm going to mention something that might be a bit confusing if you're not up to date with input delay and stuff like that. But when you aim on a really, really low input delay, basically one to one, basically well, what I mean by one to one is you move your mouse and it moves on screen. It's very hard to tell the difference anyway, but we're on on aim lab it's input delay is not a thing so what you're doing is training your aim for super sensitive movements way more sensitive than creative way more sensitive than arena and definitely way more sensitive than a scrim lobby or a stacked game and when you're training on such a sensitive mat what i mean by that is that you can move one millimeter and it's moving like super jagged and sharp it feels good but it's going to make your aim go down so when you actually get good in aim lab, you're going to be 10 times better in game. And it's a one to one. And um, unlike Kovacs, it's one to one with Fortnite. Kovacs doesn't have one to one support because it doesn't have the files or the authority to take the files from Fortnite. Like, they don't have that fucking crossover, bro. But these are literally the same. Um, I don't know, like API files. I don't know what they're called, bro. But it's basically literally imagine like copy and pasting the file of the sensitivity slider. From Fortnite into aim labs and that's why it's so overpowered for um improving your aim and that's just something i believe bro that's something i've done a bit of research into and that's what a lot of top tier aim pros have like i guess i don't know if they were paid to say shit like that bro but that's what i've picked up if this video helped you make sure you slap the like button bro i'm gonna dip hopefully this helps you hit way more 200 pumps it's definitely probably one of the most in-depth videos on the the channel actually if you're still here bro i'm gonna hit you with a bonus tip okay bonus tip for my controller boys out there Edit and build sensitivity multiplier, put it to 1.5 because then when you come out of an edit, it's only 0.5 times faster than your hip fire aim, which means it's way easier to adjust back to your shotgun aim when you're up close or your SMG aim when you come out of an edit or your build menu. So that's definitely a must. Trust me on that. Don't have it as a two times multiplier because that means when you're editing and building, your sensitivity is two times faster than your hip fire, uh, but your gun out sensitivity. So when you're transitioning, it's going to be super jagged and not smooth. That's why you got to rock. Okay, listen, 1.5 multiplier. With that said, now I'm gone. Thank you for watching. Hopefully that earned your sub.